mayor of Artesia is with us. And what we were talking about, folks, is uh, before we went to the break, I was mentioning what we're going through with my vehicle to make it not a target for uh, theft up in Albuquerque. And that's what we were talking about is, is just how uh, terrible Albuquerque has begun. I, I can't remember if I told you this joke or Tana saw this online. The joke was that after Elon Musk bought Twitter, there were people suggesting other things for him to buy. And somebody suggested that he could get Albuquerque for 75 bucks and three <laughs> fentanyl pills. I, and it's sad. Yeah. I mean, it, it's so sad because, like I said, it's a, it's a beautiful town. There's some wonderful stuff. And yep. what they've done to it just it makes me sick. That we have to make these plans to go to a town in our state to go watch our kids play, to go do anything. It's, yeah. it's well, really well, disappointing. Because uh, we know about the... The, the border and the situation and we've talked before we've talked with the sheriff before about the drug problem and now that you're mayor of Artesia you've been mm -hmm. on the county commission for a few years now uh, now that you've had a chance to meet with some of our uh, law enforcement folks here in Artesia what what, right. uh, what are you hearing what reports do you give the council and what are you learning about the crime situation that we have right here in our own backyard you know, I think I think that's one of our big concerns, whether it be county or city. Uh, and we, I know we've talked about it quite a few times on the radio. With that border, with the movement that's happening there, it really puts a lot of pressure on not just our counties, but a lot of obviously the border counties have more pressure. But uh, folks are moving through. You know, they are through these areas, through our counties, through our cities, elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Whether they're going to Texas or up east or Colorado or wherever they're headed with their things. Um, you know, we've talked about fentanyl over and over and over, and, and it's just sad to see that nothing is being done at our border, and that stuff is coming across. I saw recently that there was a, a bust um, of fentanyl, and they, they, I can't remember how many pounds it was. It was five to six pounds. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, well, that's not that much. Well, it is when, when the tip of a pin is enough fentanyl to kill you. Right. Um, right. So you put five or six pounds, and you think, oh, my goodness, that's, that's an amazing amount. But then on top of that, you know, we, we talk about the border and crime and everything else. And now we've added a whole new layer. I, I got to see a one and we talked a little bit about it at city council last night. The, uh, one of the police presentations and they, they had it in Las Cruces is where they were taking the pictures. But with this legal recreational marijuana, they were showing what some of the baggies look like for the edibles. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one of them said Skittles. And the other one looked just like that, those little uh, sour worms you can buy. Uh -huh. Same packaging as those. One said Fritos, Chili Fritos. I mean, it is but, the but exact brand. Fritos. Well, it is. The only difference is, is you got to look in the very corner to see if it's THC. So these kids are picking up. And the reason Cruz has sent those pictures is because they had a big problem in their schools where where those were and the kids didn't even know it's not like i don't think most of the kids knowingly because mm -hmm. they were pretty young at my understanding they think they're taking skittles i mean it's really unfortunate i know some of the other states and this is what we talked about last night have passed laws where your pack packaging can't look exactly like what wow. kids would perceive as candy Th but this kind of reminds me of what you see in china for example, mm -hmm. countries that don't have really strong intellectual property laws. Right. I mean, we're living in a town where we, it's called uh, Grammy's House. Mm -hmm. They couldn't call it Grandma's House because there's a cookie right. called Grandma's Cookies. And, that was, and the, the Grandma's <clears throat> Cookie people yeah. said, no, you can't call it Grandma's House. That's too close to our cookie name and people might get confused even though there's no similarity into what they do i'm surprised that that's not uh, sk if i were skittles or i would be furious. Skittles, i'd be screaming yeah. at that or hot thing. cheetos my yeah. son loves hot cheetos and when i looked at that bag i thought he would have no idea that that hot cheetos bag wasn't yeah. marijuana and he would eat the entire bag thinking he was eating hot cheetos and yeah. i really think it's dangerous some of that packaging they've done so I know we were talking about crime, but to me that is going to be a whole new element that mm -hmm. it won't be criminal because they've decriminalized it, obviously. But it's going to be really dangerous for our law enforcement to understand what is our role in that. When those do end up at school, what what happens? What do we do? Because in the law, there's nothing they can do, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So it's, we've got a lot, they've got a ton on their plate that they're having to deal with on top of everything else. And, uh, yeah. uh, but they're, uh, that presentation, uh, uh, keep, um, Commander Keonis gave it last night or yesterday afternoon and fantastic presentation kind of showed some of the statistics they were dealing with, some of the things that are changing, how they're handling those changes. And uh, I, I think Artesia and, 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 you know, the area should be, be happy and proud of, yeah. of the folks that are there and, and, and what we're trying to get done. Oh my gosh, that's just, that, that just makes me mad right there. That, and, and you talk about the legality of the product or all that, that set that aside. That's not yeah. what we're talking about. This exactly. is intellectual property. If you, you know, there's a lot of money that is spent on picking the colors, the color schemes, the logos, the packaging, the whole thing, and for somebody to just rip it off, yeah. you know, it's legal now. You don't have to hide it in goofy packaging unless yep. you've got some other purpose in mind of what you're trying to and do. And that was my exact point. I said that is 100% targeting the youth yeah. because there's no other reason to have those exact candies and those kind of if you weren't really targeting the youth. Yeah. And, and remember what happened with, with, what was it, the camel thing on the cigarettes, whatever mm -hmm. that guy was, and uh, all those were targeting youth, so they made him remove them. Right. Well, here's recreational marijuana, and, and they've even taken it a step further and made it look exactly like candy. Yeah. And, uh, oh, gosh, you can't get candy cigarettes in the... In the exactly. I love those candy yeah. cigarettes. So they were really good, weren't they? It didn't lead me to smoking, though, because, you, because my... My, my dad said, if you start smoking, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great incentive and, to and, not. And at that time, I believed what he said. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. So, That's funny. So. <laughs> so it didn't happen. Well, um, let's talk about other uh, activities or other items that uh, came up at council last night. What, uh, what are okay. some of the other highlights? Yeah, lots of good highlights. Um, you know, obviously, our budget committee talked a little bit. We should be wrapping that up pretty quick. We're supposed to have a budget meeting here uh, with the entire council. Um, hopefully, in the next week, week and a half, we're trying to get everyone's schedule. Everybody's got a ton going on. So yeah. hopefully, we'll get that wrapped up. That's consumed pretty much from from when I took office to now that's been a big part of our our, our work towards mm -hmm. um, so that'll be nice to get that done put it away to, to start working off of that next budget plus deficit pulling from it, reserves what's it looking it like? it looks like um, obviously this budget will end up with a little bit of a surplus the next budget I, I guess the budget we're working off of right now which is it's about a month left mm -hmm. When it was passed, there was about five million that they were going to have to pull out of reserve. I don't think that that's not what's going to end up happening. I think this next budget will probably be a lot of the same, where where it might not be completely balanced. Uh, we'll be using a little bit of reserves with a thought of we'll most likely end up balanced by the end of the year. We feel pretty confident with that. We haven't done anything terribly wild in the budget. Obviously, I know some people were worried about that, but nothing wild. We've just budgeted into what we think is actuality um we moved our grts a little bit looking at the trend where they're at instead of keeping them so low we moved them up a little bit and uh, try to give us a real snapshot of where we're at to work off of for the year so i, I feel pretty confident with what we've put together uh, hopefully the council will as a whole will think it looks pretty good and, and we'll get moving on it because there's some good fixes in there that i think you know talking about uh, some of our departments that that need to move in the right direction or I shouldn't say it that way they they in the right direction but help them even move more in that direction where they want to head um, get them the resources they need to get some of the things they want to get done done so uh, we're excited to get that started I know a lot of folks out there are excited um, to see the budgets and, and hopefully they'll they'll have the tools and, and things they need to, to get moving so, so as you've learned and been in this process um, I know it's been a couple of years that there's they've had to pull from reserves to or at least projected that they might have to mm -hmm. to, to balance things or at least that's been considered for the last couple of years um, is artesia in a position that that can go on for a while or uh, are we going to reach a point here in the next few years where it's got to stop being negative we got to stop pulling from the reserves and, and start putting back in yeah well i think we never should have to pull from the reserves that's obviously not the goal so one of our big focuses and, and what we've talked a lot about in budget and some of the other committees is is you know the grt has been fairly stagnant for the last let's say 10 years or so 
um, you know, we've kind of been riding along. There's been dips and there's been, you know, a few hills, but, but a few dips. And so how do we make that GRT? How do we grow that GRT? How do we get businesses here? One of the big things that I talked about a lot, and I still talk about a lot, is, is housing development. I think you and I have had that discussion. Mm -hmm. If we start developing houses, obviously, then you take a big 200 acre, 100 acre, whatever that looks like, blank piece of land, turn it into housing, well, now your property tax will be better. Property tax is really nice because it's fairly consistent. Mm -hmm. um, so cities can kind of look at that and go, okay, here's consistent, whereas GRT is up and down quite a bit. So if we can get that consistency in the houses, but with houses, you obviously have a workforce. With a workforce, you might have new new businesses. With new businesses, you have new GRT. So it's a, it's a domino effect that we're trying to create. And I think we're gonna have to get really aggressive in that to to help grow properly um you know we don't want to become a metropolis i'm we're not saying that so <laughs> so don't worry but we do need to grow there's a lot of folks that want to live in this town it's an incredible town um we have an incredible as we're sitting in this hospital we have a great ho we have great facilities around here great schools people want to be here and and we want to make sure that 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 opportunity is there so yeah. with housing all different kinds of housing i know you hear it all over the spectrum. So, but if we can properly make that grow and, and, and properly get that in place, I really think those GRTs will grow. Sure. And they're going to have to. I mean, you can't stay stagnant for so long. We've seen inflation, not just with this president, but everything has increased over years. It just does. Um, yeah. It's the nature of the business. And we've got to keep up with that to some extent. Well, I know I'm, I'm guilty of this, too. I think we all are to a certain degree. But I, I'm, as I'm rolling through my mind, some of my wacky ideas are, to require all Amazon packages to be delivered to a retail store in the back of the retail store right. so that yeah. the people have to go to the retail yeah. store and walk to the walk back, through walk yeah. through the store to see what's in the store. Oh, I yeah. didn't know this was here. I didn't know this was here yeah. on their way to picking up their Amazon packages. Absolutely. That's a great idea. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, that and toll booths. You know, we put a toll booth, but you only have to pay a toll to leave Artesia. You don't pay a toll to, to come back. I anyway. see. So that's another one of my wacky ideas that uh, I'm not going to pass that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. That yeah. Yeah. Happening. Can you imagine how popular I would be then? So <laughs> <laughs> be a one -termer on yeah, that, uh, I need no help in unpopularity. So <laughs> but no, I mean, you're right about that. So when you talk to have you had a chance to talk to contractors or uh, uh, developers to, to, you know, what are the challenges? Do we need more inspectors? Do we need tax incentives? What do we need to do? And is that part of what's being put together as a plan to try to move in that direction? You know, uh, yes, we uh, we see what the cities around us are doing and they're very aggressive with it. And I think that's where, where we're here. We're losing a lot of these developments and things like that. Now, luckily we do have a development coming. It's not in the city, it's in the county. It'll be 60 lots, wonderful. I'm so glad these things are happening. I do think we can be a little more aggressive. There's incentives that some of these other towns use. Um, you know, I, I was talking to a guy and, and he said Hobbs, it was really interesting what Hobbs does is, you know, if you own a lot and then there's a lot in the middle and a, so if you're three lots deep, mm -hmm. but you need something run to you, Hobbs only charges you for your piece. And everyone says, well, that's anti-donation, that's this. Well, no, it's not because if for this person to hook into that sewer, water, whatever it is, they have to pay their entire piece before they can hook in. So that's how they're capturing that. So there's lots of things that I've been talking to other cities saying, how do y'all do this? And does that fit for us? I'm not sure that that's our right. answer, but at least getting those ideas and saying, well, how, how are y'all growing? Because Hobbs has done an amazing job of growing. And I know some people say, oh, well, they're a home rule town. Well, they are, but, but there's also things that the state will allow us to do to, to grow um, and make sure that we're we're doing yeah. it correct now obviously before we did anything we would send it to Santa Fe get their approval because we want to make sure we have that and we're not going rogue uh, <laughs> or anything I mean uh, so folks don't worry we're not trying to trying to get crazy out there but um, there are really good ways to help our city grow and, and help us grow it like I keep saying properly yeah. not just the Wild West hey go do what you want we want to make sure that in 20, 30 years, when you drive through those neighborhoods, you think this was well thought out. I mean, you drive through those towns where you think, oh, they really thought ahead on this and, and yeah. it's still great. So, and sometimes you just, you know, like years ago when we first started going to Rio Rancho for state baseball and softball tournament, when Jim Wilburn and I go up there, we go at uh, Cibola, I think it's Cibola School, which mm -hmm. is right on the 
mall. It's right on the edge of, of Rio Rancho. And there was a dirt hill behind us. If you drive by that school now, that hill is gone. Or if you go to the top of the hill, yeah. it's neighborhood after neighborhood after neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Cleveland's the same, uh, or <coughs> Cleveland High School at Rio Rancho. First time we went to Cleveland High School, I thought, where on earth is this place? <laughs> uh, well, it was the Santa Ana Star Center. It's not the Santa Ana Star right. Center now, but yeah. it, it, was, it was there. We were going there for volleyball or basketball, and we are yeah. driving out there, and we're going, where is this place? Because we're driving in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And, and then we come up on this great big ginormous building. Well, that's Cleveland High School. <laughs> right. And, well, that's not where we're going. And then we go down the road. Well, what's that ginormous building? Well, that's the, the city complex, you know, and the HP and the, the Rio Rancho city. Well, where are we going? And then there was Santa Ana Star Center. Now you go back after all these years. I mean, they had it platted out. They had all the divisions, uh, subdivisions lined out. And now you see them starting to... To, to build out. Is that something that Artesia may consider is just going out and finding some places and just platting it out and saying, you know, here's where we want a neighborhood to be. Right. Will somebody come in and develop this? I, you know. Well, if you look around Artesia, there's already some stuff that's annexed into the city that has some big acreage on it mm -hmm. that, that kind of when was presented to the city, there, there's already some zoning put to it. And, and so we are ready for that. Um, okay. um, we've got some really good spots. Uh, Zone platted or platted is probably the wrong word because you would want their the person to come in and probably redesign what they want. But sure. ready to go, here it is, and, and those are the ones we'd really like to focus on and work on. Um, you know, I've already got in trouble once. Someone thought we were going to annex something. We're not looking to annex anything new. We have You're we have some within the we already? have stuff already within the city that's ready to go. Um, and you're you're there's some big acreage um, in in the city that. We just need to develop it. Yeah. Well, it's it's been a challenge for a long time. I mean, it's not a new thing. Right, yeah. Uh, when I moved here in 1991, which seems like an eternity ago, yeah. that was the same type of problem. You know, this is causing an effect on the market. If you really want to, you know, we call it the Artesia adjustment. Houses of the same square footage and design are, are more expensive here than if you take that same and plop it in Roswell or plop it in Alamogordo or something like that. So, I mean, this is something that's been going on for a, for a long, long time. And, and uh, maybe now, again, is another time to try to, uh, to, try to address that. Yeah. Uh, I know there's some other goals you had uh, as you're working with the council, uh, pay for uh, police and fire mm -hmm. and EMTs and other uh, right. positions within the city. We just had John Rossnell saying that they implemented you know, the governor's gift right yeah the pay for teachers mm -hmm. has the governor gifted uh cities and municipalities with money to pay more for no, no. that's part of our we we've got to <laughs> we got to get that figured out so that's too <laughs> yeah bad. yeah no she wasn't she didn't gift us anything unfortunately so yeah. uh but that's okay because we'll 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 figure it out um okay. but that's just, part of the process mm -hmm. uh, yep that'll be part of that budget that's something we're really working on i think we'll i think we can we can get where we want to be on a lot of stuff so yeah. uh, i feel good about that i know recreation is something else a lot of people are wondering about i've had some really great meetings with some folks uh, on things they would like to try to help us get accomplished in artesia so hopefully working with with some companies that have already approached me saying hey we're thinking we'd like to maybe do this and mm -hmm. uh, with these other individuals talking about something totally different all of it seems uh, very achievable um, and, and i think we can look forward to some really big wins um, hopefully in the near future would be the goal um, yeah. when i say near future i mean some people think tomorrow <laughs> uh, give us just a second we've got to got to get a get our feet under us you know we're, yeah. we're we're a newer group i mean we got two new counselors a new member uh or new mayor and uh takes us a second. and when you get the budget thrown at you like the first day you're there you're like oh so let us get through that and then we can start tackling some of these other Good. other big things Good. Um, were there any other items from the council meeting last night that you want to uh, you know, those were the big ones. Obviously, uh, a really cool honor for our, our police department. I think the, the sheriffs were there, sheriffs from Lee County. There were a lot of folks out at the, the airplane park yesterday with the Special Olympics torch. That was a really cool. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get there because I was with another group talking uh, where Commander Kionis was giving his presentation with a group of ladies. And just some really great stuff happening in Artesia. Um, and, and we kind of talked about that a little bit yesterday. So. 
please get involved with what's going on. I know the city's trying to trying to get our stuff out on Facebook to see what's going on. I know the chamber does a great job. Y'all do a great job of keeping everybody informed of, hey, here are things going on. Try to get involved, try to get going. And uh, there's some really cool activities. It's kind of, it's it's been fun. I know a lot of people have approached me lately saying, hey, we really appreciate how much we're seeing. And it's nothing new, it's just, we're trying to get it out there more so people see it um, right. and, and are able to take advantage of it because uh, the town has a lot of stuff and right. uh, sometimes we forget that because we think oh there's nothing to do well there is we just gotta gotta look for well, it well the chamber's got their uh, ac summer activities fair tomorrow right at the bulldog training center i think at 3 30 and there's going to be 20 30 entities that are all having summer activities for kids that are going to be there so parents can go in one place yeah and and so oh here's the here's the swimming program here's that uh last thing i want to ask you we are here at artesia general um i know you've been with the county as a commissioner now as the mayor uh, as well there's a lot of awesome partnerships that uh, that these entities have with our hospital here yeah uh, what's it been like for you as a commissioner and as a mm -hmm. as a mayor working with with Artesia General? Obviously, it's a great partner to have in the community. It's really nice to hear uh, when you're when you're around the area, Carlsbad, when I'm up there at meetings or anything, they really, how highly they speak of our hospital, the hospital staff, the doctors we have, all the things that we offer here. I think people forget that. I know we're a small rural community, but we have a hospital that offers an incredible amount of stuff that other folks uh, just don't have the opportunity to, to do. So really lucky to have have a have a facility and, and a staff like this in in our town to to help folks when they need it um but when it's when it's most crucial you want to have knowledgeable people and uh, i i think we have have folks here that obviously fit that bill and yeah. and do go above and beyond on a regular basis they, so they do, they do a great job so absolutely well good well we're gonna we, we need to take a break because they they have one of their doctors who's going to come in and well, talk to us they'll be way minutes. more interesting than me so <laughs> i'll get out of your hair all right mayor thank you so much <laughs> thank you i appreciate it yes sir all right we'll see you here next week i think yes i'll be here next week too That's, well we won't be here we'll be over there okay so don't come back here no i'm don't, just kidding well, i mean you can't <laughs> yeah. you won't